What's up, people? What's up, people? What's up, people? It is your boy MM2K back again on this channel. It's been a while, man. I ain't been here for a long time and not doing content like this. Um, and I'm, uh, if you're not familiar with my content, I am of PNTS Network, Stadia Doses, and Triple B. Yes, broadband bullies. That broadband bullies. This is special content from our P Prognosis TV series. Uh, it's called Damn MM2K. You a flip flopper? <laughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, so what's going on, man? Uh, I was sent. Well, let me let me explain who, what my background is, because many of you might be here for the first time because of all this, you know, drama always has followers. But uh, I really didn't want to do this. I was contemplating doing this because I was like, I don't want to make it seem like I'm trying to be thirsty off of someone else's success. No, it's the complete opposite. I'm happy. This is what I wanted to see for my brother because we talked about this a while ago. But, you know, if you go off of what was said today, even though it was only for like, you know, maybe 20 seconds, it, it would have gave you this impression that, uh, you know, we're agenda written, you know what I'm saying? And, and he had, he, and, and dirt had to escape our clutches. <laughs> he had to escape our clutches in order to see success. Right. Uh, and, and it's not, I'm not upset or angry because what he said, even though it's not true, wasn't horrible, but it's still worthy enough to be addressed because if left unaddressed, it can make it seem like that again we're agenda written you know what i'm saying and that we you know we're out of control when it comes to discussing xbox or platforms you know we're we're hard to work with you know all that could be derived from what was said as as, as short as it was right and it's not just me because really the content that i create for the most part now it isn't four people on this side of the fence, but there's people over here still that can be lumped in with it. Like project storm, like snow bunny. And then it isn't, it isn't fair to them either. So what am I talking about? Well, the homie dirt went on iron Lord's podcast and shout out to them. They do a fantastic job of really doing some fan service for, for the Xbox community and, and people that are excited over the Xbox platform. But um, and they've got a big boost in their, their credibility when IGN um, um, shot at them out, I believe came on the show. And then one of the members was over there on podcast unlocked. It was great stuff, right? Um, but despite all today, which should have just been a full celebration and it would have made me happy when I found out about this, cause someone, I, but I end up finding about this for all the wrong reasons. Like I'm sitting there drinking some Jameson. Yeah. You know I mean, so you gotta excuse my speech. If it's a little slur, but I'm drinking some, I was drinking some Jameson. I made some fire lasagna. I was eating my salad and I was about to go to bed. Someone sent me a DM. What a what link with a timestamp. Like you, you might want to check this out. And when I first heard the link, it was a uh, Iron Lord podcast, you know, just taking a slight jab over Stadia. They meant nothing to me. Let's just buy it. I thought it was funny. They're like, Stadia who? Because when he mentioned me, when they asked, what they asked him was, you know, um, how did WBG start? And they mentioned, and he mentioned me and talked about that I was making Stadia content. They're like, Stadia, what? You, you know what I mean? Um, and they meant nothing malicious about that, even though I, I, I am going to address that too. No. <laughs> I can't help it. But uh, yeah, 
I, I heard that part of it and I was thinking to myself, because this was a stadium person that, that forwarded to me. And I'm like, okay, I, let's not be ultra sensitive here. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't even worry about that. But someone was like, listen to listen to it. Listen to the whole snippet. Where, you know, see, and I listened to it instead of going to bed. Maybe I should have just went to bed, but I listened to it and I heard some things that were very peculiar. They were inaccurate. They, they, they you know, again, it was short, but it still puts me in a bad line. It's worth, it's, it's worth addressing. Cause it's, and it's not true. I mean, if it put me in a bad light and it was true, then I gotta I gotta own it. You know what I mean? But no. Nah. So what's going on is well, first, um, again to to my brothers at at Iron Lord Podcast. I mean no militia by this either, but uh, I gotta show y'all something. So y'all was chuckling, huckling, stadia who? Well, the 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 way the game the game streaming um, that your boy Philemus Maximus Dominus always talks about that's going to be the future of gaming that right now is a 2.1% business okay um, it's, a, it's a niche business right now but it's rate of growth is fantastic it's always overdoing yearly projections and it's growing fast but it's still going to take some time we're still years away from it being at its apex as um, Eves Guillemot of um, Ubisoft describe it being 50% of the market. Right now, it's only 2.1%. And that's fine. You know what I'm saying? That's really, it's, you looked at, if you look at projections the same time last year, it was supposed to be under 1%. It's at 2.1%. According to this survey from ERA, which is a UK think tank, they're like the UK's equivalent of NPD. And they do like these quarterly books, these yearly books. Look it up, look it up. You know, very interesting stuff. Anyway. Out of that 2.1%, Stadia itself makes up 0.8. And no, the rest of it is not xCloud. I'm sorry. To <laughs> I need to tell y'all this, Iron Lords. It's not, it's not xCloud. Um, if anything, it's GFN is either slightly lower or slightly higher than that percentage. And then the, what's ever left is for everything else. Um, a very... Uh, a very good gauge for the trajectory and the curvature as far as trends is looking at the Reddit community. I know that sounds silly, but I work with somebody and we do a podcast monthly. This guy is an expert data extrapolator. It's cra crazy the stuff that this guy can do. Check it out. It's called The Number Show for Stadia. You can go to Stadia Dosage. Check it out. It's, it's hella fantastic. Anyway, the curvatures and, and the trends that you see here with the Reddit, the subreddits, or at times equivalent to the numbers that we can get our hands on. And if you look here, Stadia is at the top as far as engagement. GFN is next. And I, I think the curvatures are accurate, but the gap may not be as accurate with GFN and Stadia. Now, everything else is falling into place is accurate. You have Shadow PC, which they went into bankruptcy. They were rebuilding. Shadow PC is right here. And under that, is xCloud with hardly any curvature <laughs> at all. I mean, it's starting to see it's starting to see an incline, but it's nowhere near the trajectory of GFN or Stadia. All right, so that's even with it being tethered to a service with twenty five mil at least twenty five million subscribers. So the next time you go <laughs> Stadia. <laughs> Just, just, just hit me up. Hit me up. MM2K on Twitter. I can see you just data. So you ain't got to go chuck, uh, choke on yourself unnecessarily. But that's here nor there. All right, we're going to get back to the regularly scheduled program. No, shout out to Iron Lord's podcast, man. Y'all doing great things for the, for the Xbox community. All right. Um, So two things that Dirt said that I'm going to have to address here. First thing he said is that I'm a flip-flop. He said that when they asked him what was going on, with WBG, how did WBG come about? I'm paraphrasing here, but this is the gist of what he said. He said, you know, I did a show with this guy named Emmett 2K, shout out to him. Da -da -da -da. We did a show called Scram Punks, and then the show was done on my channel. And um, there's Xbox, you know, I got a lot of Xbox followers. So then the show started, you know, he flip flopped and went to Stadia. And he started, and, and then, you know, the show started bashing Xbox. And my viewers were mad. 
And so then, as a result of that, I had to go make WBG. <laughs> That's basically what he said. Uh, and then he threw in there that, that Devin, you know, helped him, you know, help push him. And that was really the only accurate thing that he said <laughs> in the whole depiction. Number one, I, I'm not a flip-flopper, okay? And the reason why I, I, I take issue with that is me and him were actually live on air discussing the fact that, yes, I came in the game a serious Xbox uh, enthusiast. Hold on, let me show you something. I came in the game a serious Xbox enthusiast. You can go check this channel and see all my content. But this is my very first video under the medicine, my, my ongoing series. Xbox fanboy, I love Xbox brand. I hate what Phil Spencer is doing. No, that's one of my secondary videos. Hold on, where's my first video? Oh, here it goes. My first video is Phil Spencer gets a new promotion I'm not celebrating. This came out September 20th, 2017. All during this, and I'm I'm a serious Xbox fan. I just didn't like the direction he was taking. But I'm he was taking a brand. But I'm going to battle with Porter Rock. Uh, there's all type. Here it goes. Here goes the video right here with Porter Rock. We're going back and forth here. I'm going to bat. I, I mean, I'm talking about Uncharted. My Uncharted review. I really ripped them a whole, just a whole bunch of stuff in relation to uh, Xbox to where I favor the brand. It's just, I'm not liking the direction that Phil took it to. And it was gradual. And it wasn't just an overnight thing like somebody with an agenda. There's times to where I would bring in like these think tank panels, people from Xbox Uncut, shout out to Will Sink. We sat out and did a great think tank panel. Um, uh, a whole bunch of other people we would sit there and when I, on my Twitch channel and a whole bunch of other places we would talk about some of these issues that we were having with the brand and how we felt like that it was getting out of touch with a sector of the community so my my conversion was gradual not like the content creator he was bringing up that he was doing a show with at the time on a regular basis that literally looked at some numbers saw that PlayStation with, you know, uh, doing PlayStation content would give you more numbers and they flip-flopped over there. That's not what happened here. And I don't like that inclination because it makes it seem like that I said, oh, well, you know, uh, well, let me go do the stadium thing. Maybe I can hop on the stadium thing and really take advantage of that. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and dogged out the Xbox community. No, my issues were gradual. They, they never got addressed. They just became more compound and therefore I made the change. Um, that's not flip-flopping. And he's actually live on air with me talking about that, which is more astounding. So maybe he thought I wouldn't hear the show. Maybe he didn't care if I heard it. Well, what was I going to do? Or who's going to listen to who's going to believe me? Come on, you should know better than that. <laughs> you should know better than that. Because if it, if it comes to that point, you, you, you know I got the receipts. So we, we, we shouldn't do that. Yeah, that, that's not true. Also, what's not true is that I that we were bashing Xbox. Um, shout out to Dirt. I love him to death. I'm not trying to be mean when I say this, but Dirt at times, and I know this from personal experience, and I'm only saying this because this is the second time I've had to correct a record on him with him just saying, well, you know, I'm going to throw, throw this mammy jammy under the bus because I don't work with him no more. You know what I'm saying? That's that, that, that's the impression I'm getting. But um, dirt sometimes gets too attached emotionally to someone like an Xbox. It even gets to a point to where whether he he whether he likes you or not, if you don't like Xbox, he don't like you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like he 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 he'll. He'll, he'll grow what appears to be deep hatred for you if you don't like Xbox. And, I, and I've seen it firsthand. You know what I mean? And I'm not saying he's a bad person. He's not a he's not a bad guy. If you were to meet him on the street opposite of all this, cool guy. But this whole Xbox thing is 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 just take it's just taken too too seriously. You know what I mean? So to him bashing Xbox is, if you ask me an honest question, we're supposed to be a variety show where we're talking about every single platform, all the news. And you know I don't like Xbox, so I'm not gonna lie just because we're on a, your channel. If you ask me a question about what do I think about Xbox, and I'm like, I'm not impressed by this, 
that's not bashing the platform. I give you my reason of why I'm not impressed or what my thoughts are. That's it. You can move on and go to the next panel member. And I'm not going to interject and jump in and all that other stuff. And then we can have a variety shit that we're supposed to have. But there was a point in the show in Scram Punks where um, it was me, him, and Bunny, I think for the most part. And when Xbox came up, I wasn't a big fan of Xbox. She wasn't a big fan of Xbox. So when the Xbox questions came up, he would defend it. And we would be like, well, we're not really impressed with whatever Xbox trying to do. To him, that was bashing. To correct that, he ended up, Tsunami ended up coming in, right? And uh, we ended up getting Devin, which Devin was a great ad. I, I love Devin. Um, and I felt like that he should have got some more mentoring, but I'm not going to go there. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to be petty today. Anywho, but I, but Devin came in because he had a mentality of not, I'm just going to utilize this platform and go about my, utilize, use it. And, and do my thing and screw everybody else. He wanted to add to the family and help people grow along with his growth. That's why I got nothing but respect and love for Devin. You know what I'm saying? Um, but when Devin came aboard and Devin would challenge me all the time, we would always challenge each other on other people's opinions. And I think it was at a good spot, but I think that still wasn't enough. Because what ended up happening was, as Devin's there, he, after several months of me, or, or me several months prior, even bringing up the idea, yo, perfect, perfect. you would kill it. Hence why I even gave him the podcast because I knew he would kill it on an Xbox podcast. I pulled it up to him one time. I said, Joe, you should really do that. I said, I really think I feel it in the air dirt. Xbox is going to blow. And I said, you, I said, before these flip floppers, and this is what we was, this is where the whole flip flop thing is really out of context. I can't believe my brother, I can't believe my brother did this to me, man. <laughs> he went on Arlo's podcast and violated me. I told him. And he, was, and he agreed. I said, before these flip-floppers come back, because they're not authentic, they're not like me. I have an integral beef with Phil Spitzer's direction. That's not these guys' problem. Their problem is, is they just don't like the ching -a ling a ling that Xbox is bringing at the moment. They see they can get more over at PlayStation. I said, before these flip-floppers come back um, uh, dirt, and try to regain the saddle. I said, you take the reins, bro. He was like, yeah, you know, like he was like still unsure. You know what I'm saying? Like, i like, you should do it. And I, I ain't want nothing to do with it. I'm gonna help market it. I'm gonna help promote it. But I, I don't, I'm not gonna be on the show because I'm not an Xbox, but you get full green blooded Xbox people to do the show. You know what I'm saying? And I said, dirt, you'll kill it. You'll make it, you'll murder the game. I said, you'll get the respect that you finally, you'll finally get the respect that you deserve. Oh man, I don't know. I'm not sure, man. I don't, he was, he, he wasn't, he wasn't digging it. A few months later, he come to me like, you know what, man? I'm really, I'm really thinking about doing the show. I think I should do it. I, I said, I told you. He's like, yeah, man, I'm gonna do it. Me and him sat down. We start talking. Who could join him on the show? I'm not going to name any names because these people, a lot of them, most of them didn't end up, the people that he have now are not the same people that we were scouting to see who would be on the show with him, right? But then he dropped it again. And then several months later, we got Devin on. And Devin was that final push. Now, he ain't lying about that. Devin was the final push. And boom, WBG is history, right? But here's the thing about Scram Punks. Let me get out of here. Here's the thing about Scram Punks. When WBG started, like the goal was to get bro to a thousand. And I, I think WBG didn't start until he was at a thousand. And I made it my duty to press the Xbox community to ensure that he got to a thousand. I was shaming, I was shaming all the big Xbox people. It's a shame that dirt's only at 700. It's a shame dirt is only at 800. Don't make me pull out the tweet. I got to, cause the tweets are still there. 
It's the shame dirt is that such and such. Y'all should be ashamed of yourselves. Why? Because dirt was unique. Everybody else was trying to copy, cut, paste, and sound like elevated music. And dirt was doing the damn thing. And I was out there representing for my bro. So he gets to a thousand. The plan was to keep scram punks with him until it got to a thousand and then bring it back to me. I'm rapping and Neethos, Neethos is like, no, dirt is killing it, leave him the show. I said, word, we gonna do that for my bro because this is a family affair, right? WBG gets on the scene, starts off popular, it's popping. It's like it's it's exactly like I said from the beginning that he finally realized and like how Devin pushed him to do that all everything started falling all the stars and everything started aligning properly. But the dynamic of the channel was starting to change. Now I was getting super 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 diehard Xbox. So now when MM2K or anybody says anything that isn't 100% we love Xbox. It's like now there was this urge that we got to, they have to be challenged. They have to be beat down for, for, for their disobedience, right? So it stopped becoming a thing of, all right, Moss, what do you feel about Xbox? Well, I don't agree with that because of this, that, and the other. I right, well, Bunny, it stopped becoming that and it started becoming these New, these this the, the, the Xbox uh, uh, peanut gallery that was appearing on the show now that they would ask a question about Xbox I would give my opinion and I will be argued down for 45 minutes to an hour now mind you before that became the norm the show was getting around 40 40 50 people when that started becoming the norm the show was hitting around 75, 80 people because they love to see the Xbox uh, diehards argue with MM2K. The problem with that is, number one, I don't even care about Xbox all like that where I am just want to waste a whole hour arguing about them. If I cared that much about Xbox, I would ask to be on WBG. I'd have asked to be on an Xbox. I would have started my own Xbox podcast. I don't give a damn about Xbox like that. The bigger problem though was we had new talent on the show. Remember, this is a family affair. So we got Snow Bunny there. We got now we got Project Storm, who Project Storm is actually a pro Xbox guy. He just happens to like Stadia too. But they ain't want they ain't want to deal, they ain't want to work with him because he likes Stadia. Oh, we don't care. Phil Spencer told us to hate Stadia. Say so they was hating on Storm. So Storm ain't getting no play. Bunny ain't getting no play. Bunny's like, well, what's going on here? Am I meant to meet now? Storm is sitting there, hey, like Moss, what is the purpose of me being here? I could go get me something. I'm sitting there starving, trying to be on this damn show. What is we doing here? And it was all circumvented around arguing with me for I for the and the and the Xbox community loved it. I saw people coming to the show I ain't never seen on the damn channel. Talking about they was mad. Mammy Jammy, please. You ain't got a lot of kicking, bro. That was the, that, hey, look, that was the sorriest display of recollection I've seen in my life. <laughs> like, stop it. And the thing about it is, you're sending off the impression that we was reckless and we was, you know, we knew what the show was about, but we didn't care. No, it was the complete opposite. We knew what the channel had become. We knew what that community was now thirsty for. They wanted us there. Cause I remember when we left and I saw the channel, oh, why they leave? They wanted us there so we could be argued down every show. And when we was like, this is not what we're here for. They was actually said, oh man. Well, we'll just, you know, talk smack on WBG, you know. But they love that dynamic. They get themselves energized on Mondays with WBG and on Wednesdays on Scram Punks, they would deal with the old nasty MM2K.
So it wasn't no dynamic of we was bashing Xbox and you were forced to do WBG. WBG was in the work. It's just the name wasn't in the works. WBG was in the, the thought process behind it was in the works from the very beginning, bro, when we brought you on. Before you even believed in it, we believed in you. Then when you started believing in it, then you dropped it. And thank God for Devin, who really should have been mentor. Let me stop. He really should. No, no, I'm not going to stop. He should have been mentor because the brother was thinking family oriented, was thinking about more than just himself. He should have been taken under the wing first and foremost, but I'm, I'm going to stop there. I ain't going to go there. He the one that gave you the push to do the show. Finally. No, was it because you you you, you were getting there was getting abusive on you had what there was like four Xbox people and not even including Storm because again Storm was an Xbox guy and whenever I would say what I had to say about Xbox Storm felt like he had to show his independence you know what I'm saying because he could feel the tension oh this is MM2K's guy so I got to show that I'm my own person hey no Moss I don't agree with you on such and such such and such you know what I'm saying he would go about his business the way the show was supposed to progress it wasn't an, uh, an hour long fair we gonna try to argue this man down and y'all never was successful <laughs> you know what I'm saying it was just a losing fest every day of week but the audience loved it but I didn't come near for that. And they didn't come near for that. I get that there were things, things happened in a way that maybe made you feel a certain way, but that's not an open invitation for you to try to distort the facts. And I'm not saying it's like you a bad person. You just got a bad habit, bro. This is the second time this done happened. When you was telling Muggs that I had a problem with Tsunami. I had a problem with Tsunami. Me and Tsunami had a situation that involved both of us. I told Tsunami what it was. Tsunami didn't like what I had to say. He decided he, ain't, he wasn't going to talk to me no more. So that was that. And then he didn't want to be on the show when I was there. I had no problem with no Tsunami. But that was the easiest thing for you to tell the people then. You're doing it again. Come on, bro, stop it, man. With that being said, the final thought is when emotions were raw, when we made the split, because I ain't going to front, because a bunch of stuff was happening behind the scenes, and it really seemed like to the other panel members, they were being disrespected and being pushed to the side. You know what I'm saying? And it seemed like that what was happening was the, the energy was being sucked out of, look, we're family. We're building a network together. Let's do this. Let's cover everything from X to whatever. And let's, let, let, let's grow. It looked like the energy was being sucked out of that to we are going to boost up Xbox at all costs. And anybody that doesn't agree that Xbox is the best box, you know what I'm saying? You either go, you 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 gonna bow down. We ain't, we don't care about no long term thing, this that or the other. It's all Xbox, Xbox, Xbox. That's the ore that everybody else was starting to feel. I had people hitting me up saying that, like, "Yo, what's, what's going on here, man? Things is changing, bro. It's not looking good." And when it was more than evident, when care to the fellow panel members, members seemed to go out the window, I did take it upon myself to just, just cut it, <laughs> cut, you know what I'm saying? Cut it right there, I ain't gonna front. And, I, and, I, and that's a tendency that I have that's kind of bad too. I'm very self-aware. I, well, I said, when, when, you know what I'm saying? When I'm like, I, I get into a mind state when people should know better and stuff's getting too silly, cut. So we cut it. But, and I get where 
there may have been some angst because of how, how that happened. Regardless if people should have known better or not to afford to even get to that point. So I'm not saying nobody's right or who's wrong. I'm just letting you know how the, the emotions were. When the emotions were rolled in, I didn't get on the scene and say you you was an agenda switcher or you did this or you did that. I ain't say nothing that was that's I could have made because people were people were upset with me that I wasn't gonna be on the show. Even though they were complaining about the direction the show was going into, they didn't want me to quit the show. They wanted me to try to change the dynamic. And I just said it wasn't worth it to me. But I didn't come out there and blame you. I could have, but I didn't. I didn't throw you under the bus. I didn't call you this. I didn't call you that, even if it was. Real quick, everything I said about you, bro, since then has been accommodating, has been adoring, has been, not, I'm proud of you, this, that, and the other. Even the times where I've had to mention you on my Stadia Doses channel because you are a part of my history. That's all I've done. So, and I got a link to the Patreon that I created. Here, here it goes right here. Let me see. If this, is this it right here? Yeah, hold on. This is a link to the Patreon that I created. Look at the date. September 24th, 2020. It's like a few days after everything went down and you went live and you told everybody that the panel split. You know what I mean? Um, I went on Patreon and I spoke to followers about it. And I'm going to make this live here. I'm taking it off of Patreon and I'm making it live here. So this is going to be the link. I'm going to drop the link, you know, in the bottom of this video and for people to listen to that and to hear how I spoke of you opposed to how you spoke of me. Now I'm not offended. I'm not hurt because honestly, I was beyond this. I thought we talked about this behind the scenes. I thought we got the air clear and I thought we was moving on. I thought there was no more tension or whatever that was being described. And I thought we weren't going to run into any situations where people were getting thrown under the bus. And I thought those days was done. You know what I'm saying? Apparently not. And it says to me that there might still be some things that you feel like you got to get off your chest. And again, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to be uh, um, facetious when I say this. Let's talk about it. If you feel like there's some things that you got to get off your chest, instead of calling me a flip flopper and making it seem like that we we forced you in a negative way, we force you to create WBG with WBG. The birth child of WBG actually was, yo, Dirt, you can host your own podcast. Before these flip floppers flip flop back, bro, and take the reins back and just just push your head down under the water again, you need to get, on, get up on the saddle. Instead of doing that, let's talk about it. But let's talk about it on your channel. So I'm extending the invitation that I'm willing to come on your channel because again, I'm not thirsty. Me coming on your channel is not going to do anything for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ain't none of your followers coming back with me. I know that. So let's go on your channel. Let's talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Instead of calling people's names and distorting the truth, just, you know, further disrespecting the panel members because when they catch one of this, you know what I mean? It's like they're going to feel... They're not going to feel good about it. You know what I mean? I, I, I wish you nothing but continued success. This was always what I wanted for you um, because that was the goal. You know what I mean? It may have not worked out exactly as all parties thought it was going to go, but that's that never deterred my desire for you to see success and you're seeing it. And now you're on Iron Lord's podcast. That's a big step, bro. Just because you taking a step up don't mean you got to step on somebody. You know what I mean? 
and sitting out there and putting again, I'll talk to you about this, putting this negative energy about me and it's not accurate because it's more convenient for you. You got to stop that, bro. You a leader now. You're a leader in this game. You're a leader regardless of what anybody say about you. You are now a leader. Leaders swallow their pride when, when, when stuff gets thick and stuff gets tough. And they make the difficult decisions to be honest and true for it. You know what I mean? Don't, don't lie to kick it. You ain't have to give me my flyers about. You could have never mentioned me. And I would have never recorded this. I'd have been happy as a kid, a fat kid in a candy store. But saying that I flip flop, well, we on air talking about actual flip floppers and making it seem like that we created a bad dynamic. We was smacking Phil Spencer jackets and spitting on the emblems of Xbox and all this other stuff. And, oh man, I gotta go make me an Xbox show. <laughs> like stop, hey bro. Hey bro, that's what we doing. Let's talk about it. Let me know. Hit up, hit up, bro. I, I come on the show. We could talk about it. Me and you, you know, you chant, you, 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 you chat, can sit there and say the little grimy stuff that they want to say to me. You know what I'm saying? It's all good. It's all gravy. But let's just, let's just get it over with if that's what you want to do. If not, I, I can understand. But, but it feels like to me that there's still something there. You know what I'm saying? For, for, for things to be represented that way. You know what I mean? It feels like something is still there. Let's, let's fix it. All right. With that said, hey man, much love to you still, bro. Much respect for you and what you're doing with your thing. Uh, keep it going, brother. All the more success for you. And I hope next time it'll be your ass on IGN. You know what I mean? You'll, or you'll be getting some Xboxes to, to uncover or to uh, unbox and all that other stuff, okay? But if you got to hit me up, hit me up. With that said, peace out, everybody. Y'all got any questions for me? Y'all know y'all can hit me up. I'm going to open the door at MM2K. Until next time, y'all have a wonderful gaming day. Peace.